Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Now, did Tory Minister Kit Malthouse actually insult the nation in an absolutely vile, disgusting statement in the House of Commons? What I mean? Well, not only did he insult a nation who care about national security, he then insults Angela Rayner, then those whose family and friends who were one of the 200,000 people that this government let down and then insulted victims of domestic violence as well. All in a good day's work, eh? Yeah, all to just defend the big dog. Right, we now come to Shadow Secretary of State, Angela Rayner. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I welcome right honourable members opposite to their places for what could be their first and last <laughs> Cabinet Orals, but it's a pleasure <laughs> to be here with them. Last week, the Prime Minister finally admitted to meeting with former KGB agent yeah, Alexander right, Lebedev, yeah. a man who was sanctioned by the Canadian government. Yeah. This was directly after a top-level NATO meeting and just weeks after a chemical attack by Russian agents on British soil. Yeah. No officials or security were present. I've written to the minister opposite, but I'm yet to receive a reply, so I hope he'll answer my questions now. Did the Prime Minister take any papers from NATO meeting? Was his phone compromised? And why did Foreign Office records show the presence of an unidentified guest? Mm. And given his responsibilities, Mr Speaker, for national security and ministerial standards, does the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster believe this was inappropriate conduct by the Prime Minister. Good question, actually. So stay. Well, Mr Speaker, I am in receipt of the Honourable Lady's uh, letter, and obviously a number of those questions have to be answered by number 10. We forward it to number 10, and we'll be replying in due course. Dodge the question. Asked, uh, asked her what you thought about it. Didn't answer it, did you? Angela Rayner. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker, and I really hope that due course is very quick because this is an issue of national security, which is obviously yeah. a concern to many of our constituents. Now moving on to another very serious issue, Mr Speaker. Yesterday, our country reached the dark milestone of 200,000 COVID deaths, a tragedy for our country and for all those who have lost loved ones. The Prime Minister delayed the start of the public inquiry into right. government's handling of the pandemic, with the hearings not expected until 2023, making a full inquiry inquiry unlikely before the next election. This week, reports suggest that the government is trying to block evidence to the inquiry, with ministers fearful they could be sued for damages and officials apparently making evidence that could be withheld. So, Mr Speaker, there can be no hint of a cover-up or excuses for ministers dodging scrutiny. Does he deny those reports that have been put in the press? And if not, how can he assure us and the public that process will be independent? Question. Mm, very interesting. I'd love to hear what his reply will be here. Yeah. Well, Mr Speaker, the, the Honourable Lady has her very own brand of toxin, which she attempts to pump into everything that the government uh, does. And she... In other words, mad hysterical northerner from top there. She's effectively... No, 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 no. We can't get on... We... We literally can't conduct debate in this house on the when did you stop beating your wife uh, questions. Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, just specking light-hearted humour out of uh, victims of domestic violence now. Charmer, isn't it? Uh, this inquiry will be one that will be independently chaired and thoroughly uh, conducted. It will have statutory powers to summon evidence and witnesses in the way that others have done. We are determined to learn the lessons of the COVID pandemic, notwithstanding some of the enormous uh, um, and difficult, but nevertheless globally important decisions that the Prime Minister in other words, lessons must be learned. They had to take, not least acquiring vaccines and uh, researching vaccines before anybody else. Nobody uh, thinks that everything that happened during the pandemic was perfect. But to start her contemplation of this issue by maligning the motives of those ministers who put their shoulder to the wheel at a time of national emergency is, frankly, Mr. Speaker, disgraceful. She didn't. Disgusting. Now, Kit Malthouse. Not only did he try and insult those who really care about national security by, you know, pretending that um, there's nothing to see here. You know, he, yeah, he only met a KGB agent without security or officials. <laughs> so it's just mere fluff. Nobody, nobody should get the knickers in a twist about it. Then 
goes on to try and paint Angela Rayne as some sort of hysterical woman from top north and uh, who should really know her place and stop asking difficult questions and having me defending the indefensible. No disrespect, Kate, but I think that's a job in it. You know, if she wasn't doing the job, she'd be soon out the door and uh, somebody else will replace her. That's what the opposition do. Just saying. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> It seems to me, he just seems to think, I should be allowed to just pat her on the bottom and just send her on a merry way. Hasn't this commoner learned a lesson? You remember the last time where the establishment got into her, you know, by accusing her of doing basic instincts and uh, not only trying to distract the bodge, but also getting uh, Michael Fabricant's knickers in a twist and ogling her and stalking her on Twitter. It's pathetic. But I then expect the loved ones of the 200,000 people who would die needlessly because leaving him alone, leaving him alone, should I say, because he's doing his best, it may have escaped your notice, hysterically, toxin, Angela dear. Big dog got all the big calls right, and as, as I'm spewing my hysterical, toxic rant, and while I'm at it, I'll just make a light-hearted remark about domestic violence victims. I'll just... Just there for a figure of humour, I suppose. Clearly Angela Rayner rattled him, didn't didn't she? And all he had left was to blame everyone else for the fact that he's big big dog's ball sack handler, you know what I mean? And uh, and he's put himself into that position and uh, and may have escaped your notice, Kit. Bodge won't piss on you if you were on fire, so I don't know why you put yourself into that position. But and he also trying to <laughs> you know, <laughs> defend this government's lack of integrity all the way through and ended up flailing his arms around like a demented drunken monkey on acid in a hysterical mad rant. And how dare this woman ask him tough questions as I have to start clutching my pearls and start personal attacks to defend Big Dog. Pathetic. But anyway, what do you guys think? Right, I shall leave the video here, and um, yeah, this will be the last one for the weekend, so take care and enjoy the sun.